Hello and welcome to today's video where we're going to be discussing the motion of a falling object. So this video includes a brief introduction to the lab, the purpose of the lab, some fundamental principles, our experimental analysis, and some computational analysis, and towards the end we have answers to some conceptual questions. So to start off, we're going to be introducing Newton's second law and the momentum principle. Newton's second law states that the acceleration of an object depends on the mass of the object and the amount of force applied on it. Equivalently, another interpretation of Newton's second law states that the net force of an object is equal to the rate of change of its momentum. So the purpose of this lab can be broken down into the following three aspects. To analyze the motion of a falling object, to compare our experimental results with computational data, and to explain the following results with Newton's second law. So to introduce some fundamental principles, we're going to be discussing about gravitational force and drag force. So we know gravity is the attractive force we feel whenever we try to jump up or why we try to explain why everything stays stuck to the floor. However, on a more theoretical note, the acceleration due to gravity on Earth can be approximated via the above expression. G is a universal gravitation constant, M denotes the mass of the Earth, while R denotes the approximate radius of the Earth. This value is approximately 9.8 meters per second squared. And we always know that gravity is an attractive force and that it should always act towards the center of a point mass. Therefore, it can always be considered to be a force acting in the negative y direction. On the other hand, Drag force is a force that always opposes the motion of an object. Drag force is also more commonly known as friction due to air, air resistance, or just any resistive force. Therefore, in our case, since we have a ball falling through the air in the negative y direction, then it can be computed that the drag force is going to act in the positive y direction. So our experimental analysis had the following setup, where I had my friend hold up a paper ball approximately 1.88 meters above the height of the ground, which is at the top of the whiteboard. Our system includes the crumpled paper, while the surroundings include the whiteboard, the air, and everything in the atmosphere around the ball, which include me and my friend. I've added a coordinate axis and tracker here to be in line with the center of the ball as its origin. And the blue line measures out approximately the same distance stated, which was 1.88 meters from the top of the whiteboard to the bottom. When tracking the motion of the ball, we can see that we obtain the following results on the top right hand corner displayed in the tracker cutout. For this scenario, we're going to be excluding the movement of the ball in the x direction and only focusing on its position versus time in the y direction. Then for our computational analysis, I wrote down code for two models in GlowScript. One modeled the same motion of a falling object without drag forces, meaning the object was in free fall and only influenced by gravity. And in the second model, I also made sure to include drag forces, which would oppose the motion of the falling object. So in both my codes, I have defined the initial position and the initial velocity of the falling ball, while the initial position is very, very close to approximately zero, and the initial velocity of the ball, since it is falling at rest, from rest, sorry, is also zero. Then we have also defined a j hat vector which is the vector or the direction vector in the positive y direction. Then we have defined a while loop and also computed the position and velocity updates for the ball as it falls through the air in the negative y direction. And the data obtained from this can be seen here. In the model without drag, we see this. And in the model with drag, we see this.
now to plot our experimental versus computational data. It can be seen here that <clears throat> the predicted position without drag is seen to be the it has seen to fall the greatest distance throughout the air. And the predicted position with drag, again, in the computational version, is seen to be somewhat similar, however, it's still lesser than our predicted position without drag. And in the end, we can see the experimental position of the paper ball that was falling through the air is the least because of the resistive forces in real life acting on the ball. Now to answer some conceptual questions, if we were to examine the velocity versus time predicted by our models with and without drag, which models, if any, would predict a terminal velocity? So in the graph of velocity versus time of an object under free fall, meaning it only experiences gravity, terminal velocity has not been reached since the slope of the graph is constant, therefore also meaning that constant acceleration. However, terminal velocity may be reached when in the second model when gravitational acceleration is equal to the drag force which opposes the acceleration of the falling ball. <clears throat> and our second question states that imagine if the object was initially thrown downward. Would the terminal velocity in this case be the same or different from the case where the same object was initially dropped from rest? So we can see that indeed, according to the code, <clears throat> The terminal velocity in this case would definitely be different, where the same object was initially dropped from rest. Thank you for watching.